Alright, so this is the code forces problem 1336A. So, time limit per test, 2 seconds. Memory limit per test, 256 megabytes. Input, standard input, output, standard output, so SIO. Writing light novels is the most important thing in Lenovo's life. Last night, Lenovo dreamed about a fantastic kingdom. She began to write a light novel for the kingdom as soon as she woke up. And of course, she's the queen of it. There are N cities and N-1 two-way roads connecting pairs of cities in the kingdom. From any city, you can reach any other city by walking through some roads. The cities are numbered from 1 to N, and the city 1 is the capital of the kingdom. So the kingdom has a tree structure. As the queen, Lenovo plans to choose exactly K cities developing industry, while the other ones will develop tourism. The capital can also be either industry or tourism city. A meeting is held in the capital once a year. To attend the meeting, each industry sends an envoy. All envoys will follow the shortest path from departure, from the departure city to the capital city, which is unique. Traveling in tourism cities is pleasant. For each envoy, his happiness is equal to the number of tourism cities on his path. In order to be a queen loved by people, Lenovo wants to choose K cities, which can maximize the sum of happiness of all envoys. Can you calculate the maximum sum for her? Input. The first line contains two integers, N and K, the number of cities and industry cities, respectively. Each of the next N minus one lines contains integers U and W, denoting there is a road connecting city U and city W, and oh, U and V, denoting there is a road connecting city U and city V. It is guaranteed that from any city you can reach any other city by the roads. Print the only line containing print the only line containing a single integer, the maximum sum of happiness across all envoys. The input for this case would be seven output, so input to output, input, output. So in the first example, this is the graph that's shown. In the first example, Lenovo can choose cities two, five, and six to develop industries. And the happiness of the envoy from city two to city one is the happiness of envoys from city five, six, seven. Oh wait, sorry. The happiness of envoy of the envoy from city two is one. The happiness from envoys from cities five, six, and seven is two. The sum of the happinesses is seven, and it can be proved to be the maximum one. In the second example, choosing three and four developing industries can reach a sum of three. But remember that Lenovo plans to choose exactly K cities developing industry. Then the maximum sum is two. All right. So Let's think about this problem here. So the first thing is you'll notice in both of these examples, one is going to be a tourism city. And that makes the most sense because all of the cities, all of the industries are going to converge to one. So it would make most sense to make one itself as a tourism city. So each industry can, um, so that each tourist, each industry city will get at least one. Now the only reason this wouldn't work is if the all of the cities have to be tourism cities. That would be when um, k is equal to n. However, that never happens, as we can see up here. All right, so let me walk you guys through the logic for this, the full logic, and then we'll get to work on implementing it in Java. All right, so Let's switch here. 
So what we're going to do is first let's draw a simple graph. So we're going to take this. So one, two, three, boom, 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 and boom. And this is going to connect here, here, here. This is going to connect here. This is going to connect here and here. So here's what we need to do. So the first thing is we need to convince ourselves that if this node right here is going to be a, a city, for example, if this is going to be a tourism, which we'll mark by a T, then this one has to be a tourism. And if this one is a tourism, then this one also has to be a tourism. Right? And this should make sense to you. Because if this is a tourism and this is not, it makes more sense to actually switch them. It would make more sense. So, for example, if this was a tourism, this node right here, uh, let me do this in a different color. If this node right here was a tourism, but this node right here was not, it would actually be better to um, just make this node a tourism and this node not. So it would make more sense to make this a tourism and this not. So if you are making a node, a tourism node, then you have to make each node above it also a tourism node. Otherwise, it would make more sense to switch the orders so that way you have all the tourism nodes all the way at the top. Now make sure you convince yourself that this makes sense. Um, basically, you should never encounter any sequence. So if you've got, say, a series of nodes where there's something here, so dash, 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 then you've got a node, then you've got another node per se, and then there's something going here, and then you've got a node, and there's something going here, then you will never encounter that this is a tourism, this is an industry, and this is a tourism. You should never encounter that. Because if you do, you would it would make more sense to switch these two. Because then this industry would have one more happiness associated with it. And so hopefully that should make sense. So we've got to come up with an algorithm that can do that. Um, I can just, we, should, we, we have to come up with an algorithm that can do that. And so what we want to do is we want to say, how much can each node give me? If I make each node a tourism node, how much can I, how much happiness can I increase myself by? So this goes off of the assumption that all the previous ones, all of these ones are also going to be tourists. And so if we take, for example, this node right here, and we say, well, how much can I increase by if this is a tourism node? We're assuming this is going to be a tourism node. Now, over here, we've got, well, this, below it, there's going to be one more. And above it, there are there is one tourism. So currently, the amount of happiness we're getting from this road being an industry is two. Right? Because this road is an industry, so that's one. This road is an industry, so that's one. And if we say that this is now actually tourism, then there is, well, we like we said, there is one tourism above it. Now, if we make this a tourism, uh, let me just make say if there is one tourism above it, if we make this one right here a tourism instead, then all we have left is this one as industry, and that's also going to give us two. So this is going to give us zero extra happiness. And what we want to do is we want to do this for the same process for each node. So once we've taken this, we can associate this. We can say this node right here has a happiness level, happiness quotient of zero. Now, what we want to do is we want to go through each node. So let's do this by hand first so we can understand it and then we can code it. So now let's take this node right here. Above it, there is one tourism. Below it, there are no industries. So currently, we have one happiness attained. If we change this to a tourism, we will end up having zero happinesses. So 
that means we have 0 minus 1 is equal to negative 1 happiness. So the happiness quotient of this is going to be negative 1. Now, let's continue this for the rest of the nodes. This one right here, this is going to have, well, let's see. If this is currently having 1, 2, 3 happiness, and if we make it a tourism, then this will have, there's, well, let's, let's explain first. There are three nodes here. So there are two nodes below it. So it's currently have, and there is one tourism above it, one node above it. These ones have to be industries based on the logic we explained, I just explained to you just before. This one has to be tourisms, again, same logic. And so there's going to be one tourism, uh, two industries below it. If this is an industry, that gives us three times one is three. Currently, this being an industry has a happiness quotient of a three. Now, if we, th th well, this is giving three happiness, you could say. If we make this a tourism, then there below it, there are two. Above it, there is one. One plus one gives you two tourisms. Two into two is four. So you would say this has a happiness quotient of 4 minus 3 is 1. So 4 minus 3 is 1. Well, that's going to say we can just mark that happiness quotient as 1. Now, for this one, we can see that this one is also going to be... Actually, this one currently is giving 2. So this is going to be a negative 2. This is going to have a negative 2 quotient. This is going to have a negative 2 quotient. This is going to have a negative 1 quotient. Actually, no, this one is also going to have a negative 2 quotient. So now what we can do is if we take a look back here to this example, we can see that we want four um, industries. 7 minus 4 is going to be 3, so we want to fill up three tourism spots. So what we can just do is first label all of these nodes. We can label them by 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, like that. And so now we've labeled all of these. We can list them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now with nodes... One has a happy... Actually, no, we forgot to calculate node one's happiness quotient. So, quickly for node one, there are one, two, three, four, five, six below it. There is a zero above it. So, current, so at the start, if it's an industry, it has a zero uh, happiness associated with it. And if we change it to tourism, that's one, two, three, four, five, six tourism. So, this has a happiness quotient of six. So, now we can write six. For 2 has negative 1, 3 has 1, 4 has 0, uh, 5 has negative 2, 6 has negative 2, 7 has negative. Now we can sort this. And if we sort it, we will get, if we just sort, uh, that's too similar of a color, sort this, then we're going to get 1, then we're going to get 3, 4, 2, 5, 6, 7. And you can quickly just we can quickly just check this is gonna have six one zero negative one two 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 uh negative two negative two negative two sorry and so we would want to take the first three that's going to be these ones the first three and we just want to sum their happiness quotient so this one gives six happiness this one gives one happiness. This one gives zero happiness. Six plus one is seven plus zero is seven. So seven is our answer. And taking a look back at the problem, you see the output is indeed seven. All right, so quickly, let's try this for one more. And this time, I'm not going to go into detail for each node, um, but just what their happiness quotient is to prove that it works. So we've got four one. So there's four um, nodes. We can only choose one of them to be an industry, which means we have to choose three of them to be. Um, we have to choose three of them to be tourists. 
So we've got 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4. So 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4. So let's draw that out uh, right here. So oh, right here, we're going to get, so we've got uh, 1, 2. So that's 1, 2, uh, 1, 3, 2, 4. So this is going to be how the graph is going to look. And we got one, two, three, four. And let's do that in red to keep the same color consistency. One, two, three, four. Now quickly, let's go over each of the happiness quotient. So four has zero below it, uh, two above it. So it starts off with a happiness quotient of, a hap uh, it starts off giving uh, two happiness. And if you do make it a uh, industry, that's going to give it. Uh, you're going to take away those two happiness. You're going to have zero happiness, so zero minus two is negative two. Um, for the second one, you're going to have. Um, so this is going to have one below it, one above it. That's going to be. It starts off with two, and it ends with two. So you're going to have zero. And quickly, just there's two below it, uh, one above it. I mean, there's one below it, one above it. So if we start with this is industry, then that's going to be two, four. So there's two total here. There's one tourism. That's going to give you uh, two into one is two. And then if you make this a tourism, then that's one below it, two above. So one um, industry two tourists, that's one into two is two, that gives you a happiness quotient of zero. Uh, for three, this is going to give you a happiness quotient of negative one. And for one, this is going to give us a happiness quotient of three. So now quickly, we're going to sort it. This is going to be first one, then two, then three, then four. And we have to choose three of them to be uh, tourists. So this is going to be 3, 0, negative 1, negative 2. 3 plus 0 plus negative 1 gives us an output of 2, which is indeed our answer. So, um, so just quickly now, you might be wondering how exactly do we get this? There is, um, for example, in the second node um, over here, there is uh, one above it, one below it. It's actually quite simple. The way we do this is um, we use a depth research implementation. So at any node, you can say the number that is below it, you want to take it. So you return the number. Basically, what you would do is you would take the number below it. So how would you do this? Well, that would be your return value in a depth research uh, implementation. So for example, at two, at the second node, we would go over right here, um, so there is one below it. So we would go depth research into this node. There are no remaining nodes. Um, so what it would return is this would return one. It would take how many nodes are below me? Zero. There is zero node, like what is the depth of each node below me, right? So how many nodes are below me? There are zero here. So return 0 plus 1, because I have to include me, to here. So now this has a value of 1. Um, and so this has a value of 1. There is this node returned to me 1. So I have to add 1 for, for that to get mine. And I'm going to return that up here. This is going to give me. So this is going to give me 2. So I'm going to return this here. So in this 2, you can say there is 1 um below me and this four will say there is zero below me this three is also going to say there is zero below me zero plus one is uh one so this is going to return one so this one is going to say there is two plus one is three uh below me and zero above me so now one has a zero above it so when we go into two we're going to say there is 0 plus 1 is 1 above it. And when we go into 4, there is 2 above it, because that's 1 plus 1. 
and so if we if when when we implement it actually you'll see it makes a lot more sense but basically when we're going down basically when we're uh going deeper into the search that's when we're going to be calculating um how many are above and when we're backtracking up using the depth first search that's when we're going to be calculating how many are below so let's work on implementing this in a java program so let me close this so we'll start off with a public static void main throws io exception sorry my computer is again lagging a little bit give me a sec all right there we go so it throws an io exception uh buffered reader new buffered reader of new input stream reader of system dot in and then we're going to say a string tokenizer is new string tokenizer of f dot read line and so this is then just checking our input we're going to have the first one as n the second one is k so int n is integer dot parse int of st dot next token so i'm going to say int uh i and i mean sorry int k is integer dot parse int st dot next token and then i'm going to say that the int t which is the tourism count is n minus k right so now what we want to do is we want to set up an adjacency list and the simplest way to do this is to say an array list of integers array is going to equal a new array list array oops sorry i should probably give this a name this is going to be our adjacency list is going to be a new array list array of size n and we're going to copy this because we're going to need to make this uh, public. Ah, hmm. uh, yes. Uh, static and public. So that's going to be that um i'm going to make a public static t public static int n and we're not really going to use k anymore um now we have to uh Actually, we have to initialize our array lists for each one. So, for oh, sorry, and we're just going to say adjacent of i is a new array list, and this is going to initialize a new array list in each spot of the adjacency list. Next, we're going to iterate n minus one times. And get because it did specify there are n minus one uh, lines containing u and v connecting u and v. So we're gonna say st is new string tokenizer of uh, f dot read line, and int u is integer dot parse int. Supposed to be parse int of st dot next token. And we're going to copy this, paste, and this is going to give us our v value. And so now we've got our u value and our v value, and we can just append. So we'll just say adjacency of u dot add v, 
and the adjacency of v dot add of u. Next, we'll want to create a class which basically acts as a container. Uh, for each point, it will basically just store kind of like a pair. It'll just store the number above and the number below. So we can say um, a and int a and int b will be the two um, the two real parts of it. So public static class pair. Uh, wait, no state. Um, public in a, public in b, and then we need to insert a constructor of both of these. And so a is above, b is below. And so what we need to do is calculate our happiness quotient. Right? So just quickly, actually, no, we can do that later because the happiness quotient is just, um, actually, uh, I just realized something. So what we're doing here when we're calculating the happiness quotient is we're saying, I'm in here above, below. So currently it's B plus one times A. It's the number below plus one times a. And when we update it, we're going to get a plus one times b. And so we want to subtract b plus one times a. And this is going to give us b minus a as our answer, as our happiness quotient. Right, so b minus a is actually our happiness quotient. That makes things a little bit more simpler. Um, and you'll notice quickly that, yeah, that's what it is. Below there are three, above there is none. So b minus a is three, so the happiness quotient is three. So yeah, just a quick thing that makes it a little more simpler. So then I can just say public, um, And we can just create a just a public state, and we'll just initialize um, a equals zero equals zero. Now this, I don't believe this can happen. There has yes. Yeah, so according to the rules, um, there has to be at least a uh, one, at least two. Um, two cities. Yep, there has to be at least two cities. We can see that right there. So, what that means is this can never happen. Um, because you'd have to have one, two, which means one would have to have one below and two would have to have one above. So, a zero comma zero is an okay initialization. Okay. Um, and finally, we can just get a to string. There we go. So now that we've got this in, we've got our adjacencies. We need to create a visited array for our DFS. So public static boolean viz boolean array viz and we can just initialize that right here uh, viz is new boolean array of size n and finally the one thing I forgot to do is that um, we start zero indexed so you have to subtract one here all right, now we're ready to make our DFS function. So public static DFS. We're going to take in um, int node, and then we're also going to take in 
the height int um, above. So, oh, and this is going to return an integer. Basically, this. So I'm going to comment. I'm going to create a comment here so I don't forget. Uh, returns um, uh, num below. This one. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take the node. We're going to first say visited of node is equal to true. Then we're going to say, um, oh yeah. Hmm, we have to create states. Okay, sorry. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was create a public static state array called states. And we'll also initialize this here. New state array of sites n. And while we're going through here, we can also just say states of i is equal to new state. That's it. So we want to say uh, states of node is equal to above. Oh, wait, no. Um, the states of node dot a is equal to above. And then we're going to want to iterate. So for int uh, next in adjacency of node, if not viz of next, we want to say Wait, wait, wait. We'll want to keep a below tracker. Wait, will we? Actually, no, we won't want to keep a below tracker. We'll just say states of node dot b plus equals dfs of next comma above plus one. And then we'll want to return return states of node dot b plus one. And this is our DFS. So I can just delete this now. Actually, let's keep it. So now what we want to do is we want to just DFS the starting at node one. So we're just going to say DFS of zero, zero. And boom, that will start the DFS cycle. Each node will be reached. And then we can finally um, create a comparator. So we're going to need to sort um, we're going to need to sort the states array when we're done. And basically we want to sort it by ascending a uh, descending order. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to make the state class, oops, give me a sec. We're going to want to make the state class implement a comparable of state. And then we're going to want to override this function. And what function we're going to want to override, we're going to want to override compare to. And we're going to want to just return um, Well, we can test this. O dot. Um, oh, give me a second. Um, we're going to want to return O dot B minus. Oh, uh, why is that very weird? Oh, that's just my screen. Sorry. O dot B minus O dot A. Uh, right, and that's going to be theirs, and um, minus uh, b minus a, 
And this is going back directly to what we discussed uh, very recently right here. Um, we want b minus a is our happiness quotient. And so then we just sort, and this should be sorting ascending order. We are going to print it out just to double check. Um, so next we want to do arrays dot sort of um, states. And we want to print it out um, states dot to string. And sorry, we want to use arrays dot to string of states. And so we can just test this. And so, and then we would want a Java CF. So state zero, uh, six. One two one 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 zero two zero two zero two zero. Okay, so quickly, just an explanation. B minus a is six. B minus a is one. B minus uh, a is zero. So this is getting the right ones, and we know because we just worked through this. So instead of printing it out right here, what we want to do is we want to iterate. Um, our t times. So I'm going to say int ants is 0 for i in range t, uh, rather for i less than t. Um, we're just going, wait, k, okay. we're going to want to say ants, yes, t, sorry. We want to use t. Answer plus equals states of zero uh, states of i dot a minus states of i dot b sorry a here and then b here and we're going to want to print out our answer to the java compile seven boom all right, so now let's take in the next one, and we know that seven is correct. Um, this is going to give us two, just a quick check. Yep, that's two. Uh, let's copy this input, and we'll see that it's nine, which it was nine. So this seems to work very well. Let's submit it. So, yeah, I think, it's as simple as just submitting it. And it should work out fine. So yeah, I'll upload the file. All right, so I have uploaded it here and I'm just going to submit it and I will let you guys know what the results are when it finishes. All right, so we got a wrong answer on test case nine. So let's go back and check what the problem seems to be. Hmm. K minus N. N minus one. So let's create a let's uh just a check. I want to see um. I do think that it might be that we need a long instead, and we'll have to make this long and this long, and we'll also then uh, need to change these to longs. However, we do know that our inputs are going to be integers, so this works out fine. So great. Um, everything seems to work out fine. Um, let's just test to make sure that nothing else has been broken, so we can just compile it. 
Oh, uh, O dot B. Hmm. Oh, we do need an int. So what we can just do is we can say this. And say if o dot b is greater than b dot a return one return uh if o dot b is less than o dot b dot a return negative one return zero Yes. Okay, that worked out much better. Um, let's try it out. Okay. Uh, so just copying the inputs here. Seven. Great, that's the right answer. Two, that's also the right answer. And nine, that's the right answer. So, let's check. This might have been the problem. Um, and actually, it probably was, um, it, the, the, we might have to use a longer integer. That might be the problem. So, let's submit it, and we'll see what goes. So, it's in the queue. Yep, that seemed to be the problem. Yep. Okay, so that was the problem. We had too small of an integer, and that's just the thing you've got to remember is if you're if you're sure the logic works, then one of the things you have to check is maybe you're using too small of an integer. Now I'm just gonna quickly reread this and see if there was anywhere where it said that you needed to use a longer. A 64-bit integer, like a long. So it wasn't. But that's okay, um, because we figured it out anyways. But one, that's just one of the things that you have to check for. So, yes. Um, I'll just quickly review my code one more time so you guys can see. And if you did enjoy, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you guys in another video. So, yep. Bye.